Hey everyone, Jaquinto here. Today I'm going to be going over all the Blood Death Knight talents in depth. Now if you're just looking for quick builds for Raids and Mythic Plus, I recommend you check out my Blood Death Knight Quick Start Guide. But if you really want to learn about the talents, know how each talent works, its strengths and weaknesses, and how to create your own talent builds, I recommend you watch on. So why should we learn about talents? Copying a talent build is great if you just want to get into gameplay, but if you really want to delve into the spec and become better at it, you do want to know how each talent works and when you should be running each talent. In addition, if you're applying to raiding guilds, a lot of those guilds will ask why you're running certain talents and which talents would be best for certain boss fights. So learning about the talents will make sure that all those bases are covered. So let's get into it. So the first talent we're going to be going over is Heartbreaker, which allows Heartstrike to generate two additional runic power per target hit. As we can see for Heartstrike, Heartstrike already generates five additional runic power. So on a single target with Heartbreaker, Heartstrike will generate a total of 17 runic power. Now the additional runic power for Heartbreaker doesn't seem like it's a lot for a single target, but when you hit multiple targets with Heartstrike, it really starts to add up. Remember that when standing in your Death and Decay, Heartstrike can hit up to five targets. So if you generate two runic power for each of those five targets, you get an extra 10 runic power for each heart strike cast, which is quite a lot. Now we're going to see this in action here. If you look at my runic power down here, just below my abilities in the center of the screen, you'll be able to see how it goes up and on one target we'll hit heart strike and it's now at 17. So initially without the talent build, it would be 15. With heartbreaker, it is 17, the extra two. Now we'll move on to the multiple target scenario. Heartstrike automatically hits one other enemy if another one is close by. So looking at two targets here, if we use Heartstrike when two enemies are in range, as you can see it generates 19 runic power instead, so an extra 4 runic power, 2 for each target. Now we move on to how Heartbreaker performs in a multiple target scenario when we're standing in our Death and Decay. So while standing in our Death and Decay, Heartstrike hits up to 5 enemies. So if we drop Death and Decay here, we get 10 runic power for the Death and Decay cast, and if we hit Heartstrike, we'll get an extra 25 runic power. 10 extra runic power for the 5 enemies hit. So as you can see, in a multiple target situation, you're really going to gain a lot of runic power from this one talent. So having Heartbreaker will always allow you to death strike more often. There's really no downsides of having Heartbreaker as it's free runic power. Now we're going to move on to the second talent in the first row which is Blood Drinker. Blood Drinker is a very powerful single target ability. We're able to move, dodge, parry, and use our defensive cooldowns while channeling Blood Drinker. On single target, Blood Drinker will be a large portion of your damage due to how much damage that it deals. It only has a 30 second cooldown as well, which is pretty low. The healing from Blood Drinker, however, is quite minimal, so it's really just about the single target damage output. So if we use Blood Drinker on this mob here, as you can see it's a 3 second channeled, and in total it did 3.3 thousand damage. So the pro of Blood Drinker is that it'll get you a lot of single target damage, but that's really all it deals. The cons of taking Blood Drinker is that you won't have that extra runic power generation because you won't be able to take Heartbreaker. It is important to note that Blood Drinker is a channeled cast, so if you have to use a Death Strike to heal yourself up to full while channeling Blood Drinker, you won't get the full effect of Blood Drinker there. This isn't to say that Blood Drinker isn't viable in multiple target situations. You are able to use it, especially when kiting, to deal a large amount of damage. Just Heartbreaker tends to be the go-to because of that runic power generation. Next up is the last talent for the first row, which is Tombstone. Tombstone consumes up to 5 Bone Shield charges to give you 6 Runic Power per charge and 6% maximum health per charge as an absorb. Now this might seem like it's a lot of Runic Power and a lot of health, but the downside of this is that we have to sacrifice 5 Bone Shield stacks. In Mythic Plus and Raid, we often won't be sitting right at 10 Bone Shield stacks the whole time. A lot of times we will be between that 5 and 7 mark there. But if we're between 5 and 7 Bone Shield stacks, Using 5 of those stacks will get us to 0 to 2, which is a really bad situation. We definitely don't want to hit 0 stacks because we'll be super squishy without that armor and haste. And if we go down to below 5 stacks, Ossuary won't be active as well, so a Death Strikes will cost slightly more runic power, which is not good. But seeing this in action here, we'll mirror around 2 times just to gain, as we can see with 6 Bone Shield stacks. When we use Tombstone here, we have 40 runic power right now, consumes 5 stacks, gives us 30 runic power. And then we do have that absorb here, which is for my health, 17,307. Due to Tombstone consuming five stacks of Bone Shield, we don't really take this talent too much as it does fall behind on multiple targets to Heartbreaker and single target to Blood Drinker. However, Tombstone can be used in the very specific situation where an ability would just one-shot you if you don't have this maximum health absorb. If that's the case and you end up taking it, you wanna make sure that you start with as high Bone Shield stacks as possible, preferably at 10, and use a mirror end right after you use Tombstone to rebuild those Bone Shield stacks. So in summary for the first row, we'll often use Heartbreaker for multiple target situations, we use Blood Drinker for single target situations, 
And we never really use Tombstone, only in that specific situation where we want to prevent that killing blow. Moving on to the first talent of the second row here, we have Rapid Decomposition, which makes it so that your Blood Plague and your Death and Decay deal damage 15% more often, and your Blood Plague leeches 50% more health from the enemies. Now this may seem like a decent talent, but your Blood Plague and your Death and Decay won't be doing a whole lot of your overall damage, so it won't be a huge damage increase taking this talent. Additionally, the health drained from your Blood Plague Dot is pretty lackluster as well, so 50% increase to that really isn't going to be too much. Note that with this talent, the duration of Blood Plague and Death and Decay stay the same, they just deal damage more often. This talent really falls behind in this row as it really doesn't give too much damage and healing throughput. So unless Blizzard ends up buffing this talent, I wouldn't really run it. The second talent that we have in the second row is Hemostasis. Each enemy hit by your Blood Boil gives you a stack of Hemostasis, which makes your next Death Strike hit for 8% more damage and heal for 8% more health. So if we're going to use Blood Boil on this pack of 5, we use Blood Boil here, and as you can see, we do have Hemostasis at the top right as a buff here. For 5 stacks, that gives us 40% more damage and healing for your next Death Strike, which is a ton of more damage and healing. Death Strike is going to be one of your most damaging abilities in multiple target and single target situations, so taking Hemostasis is a large increase to your damage throughput. Even for a single target situation where you only gain one stack of Hemostasis per Blood Boil, 8% more damage and healing is very welcome throughput. In a multiple target situation, you definitely want to make sure you utilize all stacks of Hemostasis and you don't waste any. This means using a Death Strike whenever you get to 5 stacks of Hemostasis. This also means you don't want to go over 5 stacks. So say you have a pack of 3 enemies, I'll use Blood Boil here, I have 3 stacks of Hemostasis. If I use Blood Boil again, I gain an additional 3 stacks of Hemostasis, but 1 stack would be wasted because it only goes up to 5. So ideally, I would Death Strike after those 3 stacks, Blood Boil again, and then Death Strike, as you don't want to waste those stacks. Due to the large amount of damage and healing throughput Hemostasis gives you, this is generally the best talent to go in every situation currently. The last talent in the second row is Consumption, which is a mimic of our Legion Artifact ability. Now Consumption strikes up to 8 enemies in front of you, dealing physical damage and healing you for 150% of the damage dealt. It has a 30 second cooldown and it's an instant cast. So let's see how it performs on 5 targets here. We go up to the targets, press Consumption, as you can see it dealt a total of 3.7k damage. Now if we multiply 3.7k times 150%, that would give us around 5500 healing which is about 10% of my maximum health. While this seems like an okay amount of damage and an okay amount of healing, this talent just really gets trumped by Hemostasis. It's definitely not as much healing and throughput as Hemostasis would, would give you, as Blood Boil has a very low cooldown, and you're able to gain a lot of stacks of Hemostasis, especially in multiple target situations. On a single target situation, consumption really won't net you that much damage and healing at all. If we're looking at 8 targets, for my item level of 196, consumption will deal around 6,000 damage and heal for around 9,000 health. Now having a mob of 8 targets is a lot more rare in Shadowlands than it is for previous expansions, as the pulls are generally smaller. And even at 8 targets, Hemostasis would still be better than consumption. Having that consistent amount of damage and healing from the Death Strike after every Blood Boil is a lot better than having one decent heal and damaging ability every 30 seconds. The first ability on the third row is Foul Bulwark. Now this is a passive talent that gives you 1% maximum health for each Bone Shield stack that you have. This may seem decent at first glance as it gives you free maximum health essentially. But we have to remember it's not just a free 10% max health as we're not staying at 10 stacks of Bone Shield all the time. We do let our stacks drop from 5 to 7 stacks before using Merorend because we don't want to waste any charges of Bone Shield. This means that Foul Bulwark would probably be giving us maybe 6 or 7% max health on average which is still a decent amount. It'll help us survive one-shot mechanics better, and it'll also give us more time before we have to Death Strike, as we'll have more health. Now we'll see it in action. We'll use our Merorends, and you can see my health right here, just to the left of the abilities in the middle of my screen there. And as we build up our Bone Shield stacks, my health is increasing, increasing. And right now we have almost 5,000 more health. Now having that extra maximum health may seem like it plays into Death Strike, as Death Strike heals for a minimum of 10.5% of your maximum health. However, while you're actively tanking in Mythic Plus and in raids, you're always going to be healing more than 10.5% of your max health. Because Death Strike will heal for 30% of all damage taken in the last 5 seconds, this is usually what's going to happen instead of that 10.5% healing. Because Death Strike does heal for 30% of the damage taken in the last 5 seconds, this is usually what's going to happen instead of healing for the minimum amount of 10.5% of your max health. 
So having that extra health really doesn't increase that death strike healing. If you have enough health and use proper cooldown usage to survive all the mechanics, you really don't need the extra amount of max health. And it is varying as well, depending on your bone shield stacks. So since it just gives us maximum health, there's really no downside to the specific talent. The downside comes when we look at the other talents in its row. While Bulwark doesn't give us any additional resources, no additional rune, no additional runic power, and that's really when it starts to drop off. The third talent of the second row is Relish and Blood. While Crimson Scourge is active, your next Death in the K will heal a certain amount of health per Bone Shield stack, as well as generate 10 runic power. The Crimson Scourge is an RNG proc, it has a chance to proc when we're auto attacking any targets that are affected by our Blood Plague. So we just gained the Crimson Scourge proc, if we use Death in the K, it'll give us that 10 runic power and it would heal us if we're not at max health already as well. Now this talent does have a place in this row. If you didn't run this talent and you got a Crimson Scourge proc, the next Death in the K would not give you 10 runic power. So this talent makes it so you still gain runic power when using Death in the K on the proc. You also gain some healing. It's not really a huge amount. It'll probably net you around 3-5% to of your overall healing for a dungeon if you're doing Mythic Plus. And the healing does vary based on how many Bone Shield stacks you're currently at, which isn't the best because to optimally use this talent, you do want to be at 10 Bone Shield stacks, but we will very rarely be at 10. Do note that without any Bone Shield stacks, you will not receive the 10 Runic Power, so you do need at least one Bone Shield stack to receive that 10 Runic Power. I would say that if you're new to playing Blood Death Knight, this is probably the best talent to go in this row, as it is passive as long as you have Bone Shield stacks up, and it does give you some healing and resources as well. So if you don't want to worry about using an extra button, you just want some passive health and runic power, I would run this talent. The last talent on row 3 is Blood Tap. Now Blood Tap gives you one rune back instantly. It has a 1 minute cooldown and it has 2 charges. The recharge time for Blood Tap is decreased by 2 seconds for any Bone Shield charges that are consumed. In a Mythic Plus situation, this means you usually have a Blood Tap charge every 40 seconds or so. So since Blood Tap generates you a rune instantly, you only want to Blood Tap if you have two or fewer runes available currently. If you Blood Tap when you're at three runes, it'll put you to four runes in total. This way, three runes will not be recharging. Only two runes will be recharging. So you're wasting one rune that could be recharging. So putting this in action here, we're going to get down to two runes and we're going to Blood Tap there. And it gave us back another rune. We'll go back down. Say we go down to 0 to 1, and it'll give us back again there. It's also important to know that Blood Tap will give you the rune back that either has not started its cooldown timer yet, or has the most amount of time left on its cooldown timer. So if we go to 0 runes here, it's going to generate this rune back as the other ones keep generating, as we did have 3 runes that weren't on cooldown timer yet. However, if we only have 3 runes on cooldown, as you can see we have 3 regenerating, it's going to get this one back while the other two keep recharging. Now this is a waste since that rune was already halfway done recharging. We want to use Blood Tap on a rune that hasn't started recharging yet, hasn't started its cooldown timer. So again for Blood Tap, you want to use it if you have two or fewer runes, and you should keep one charge of Blood Tap constantly recharging. Now there's definitely various situations when you'd want to Blood Tap. If your Bone Shield stacks are about to drop below 5, or have dropped below 5, but you're not able to Marrow End yet due to lack of runes, you'll want to Blood Tap in order to get that Marrow End fast. If you're out of runes and there's a large damaging ability that's about to hit you, you'll want to blood tap in order to use a rune tap. If you're not afraid about your bone shield stacks dropping below 5, or a large damaging ability hit you, you can use a blood tap and just simply use that rune on a heart strike to generate more runic power. Now in this row, blood tap is my go-to for Mythic Plus, due to the amount of runes you're able to generate and the amount of versatility you can do with that rune. It works very well in a multiple target situation due to the decreased cooldown time when a bone shield stack is consumed. Relish and Blood excels more in a single target situation where you're not consuming as many bone shield stacks. Overall, the difference in terms of runic power generation is quite minimal between Relish and Blood and Blood Tap. I prefer Blood Tap just because it's predictable, you know when you're going to get that rune back, and what you can do with that rune, whereas Relish and Blood, it is based off of an RNG proc. I recommend trying both out and seeing what you like best. The first talent of the fourth row is Will of the Necropolis. Damage taken below 30% health is decreased by 30%. This is a very strong talent. Due to the spike damage that we take, we'll often fall very low in health. Once we're low, if we have Will of the Necropolis, this 30% damage reduction makes it a lot harder for us to be killed down. Since we'll be sitting at 30% health a lot when we take that spike damage, 
This talent is very, very strong. There's really no downside to this talent. It's just a very great strong talent. The second talent of the fourth row is Anti-Magic Barrier, which reduces the cooldown of our Anti-Magic Shell by 20 seconds and increases its duration as well as the magic damage absorbed by 40%. So in action, if we do take this Anti-Magic Barrier and we pop our AMS here, as you can see, it is lasting for longer, as well as we have a larger absorb there. Now there may be specific situations where this is useful. Maybe there's a magic damage one shot you want to try to avoid, and you can't use it unless you take this talent. But in almost all situations, Will of the Necropolis will be the better choice, as it's a flat 30% damage reduction below 30% health. Now the final talent of the fourth row is Mark of Blood. Mark of Blood places a debuff on an enemy for 15 seconds, and makes it so that every time the enemy auto attacks you, you heal for 3% of your maximum health. This may seem like a decent amount of health. 3% maximum health would be around 1500 health for me, as I'm about at 50,000 health. As you can see, when we place it on the dummy here, it does give him that debuff, of 3% of the max health, it will heal us when they attack us again, and it is a magic debuff. One downside of Mark of Blood is that it is on the global cooldown, so you do need to use a GCD in order to use this. Now it has a 15 second duration, so to keep this up, you have to use it every 15 seconds. Using one GCD every 50 seconds just for this isn't the best use of a GCD. Although it can give us a decent amount of a health back, it depends how fast the enemy auto attacks. If the enemy auto attacks are very fast, then this will be a bit better. If the enemy auto attacks are slow, then you're really not getting a whole lot of usage out of this talent. In this row though, Mark of Blood does fall behind, mainly due to the strength of Will of the Necropolis, as it's just way too good. Moving on to the fifth row, the first talent is Grip of the Dead. When we use Death and Decay, it now reduces the movement speed of enemies by 90%, but this decays 10% every second. This talent gives you a very strong slow in Death and Decay, and it's very useful for kiting, especially on high Mythic Plus keys. Now to get the full effect of the slow on the enemies, say if you're kiting or you just don't want them to reach a certain location, you don't want to drop Death and Decay directly on top of the enemies. You want to drop it either right at the edge of where they are, or just outside of them if they're running towards you. If you drop Death and Decay in the middle, they only have to run through half of your Death and Decay in order to reach you. But if you drop it just in front of them, they have to run through the whole Death and Decay to reach you, so it gives you a lot of time to kite. But for dropping it right here, we pull them, as you can see, they're very slow, 90%, it's decaying 10% every second, but it's quite a good slow, it gives you a lot of time to get away. So Grip of the Dead is definitely my go-to in a Mythic Plus situation, or in a raid situation where we need slows on enemies. Where this talent falls off is when you're fighting bosses. Since bosses can't be slowed, this talent really does nothing to them if they don't have any adds. Now while I'm running Grip of the Dead, I may hold Death and Decay off and not use it even if I have a Crimson Scourge proc, just because I need to use it when I want to kite or when I want to slow those enemies. So your Death Nikkei usage does vary when you're running this talent. The second talent of the fifth row is Tightening Grasp, which reduces the cooldown of your Gorfian's Grasp by 30 seconds. So this reduces the cooldown of your Gorfian's Grasp from two minutes to a minute and a half. This can be useful for specific situations where you want that one and a half minute mass grip, but it does fall behind in most cases to Grip of the Dead. I can see this used in specific situations, maybe in raids, when it aligns up with the cooldown timer of ad spawns, but in most situations, I would go Gorfiend's Grasp if there are ads, especially in Mythic Plus when you're gonna have to kite. For the final talent of the fifth row, we have Wraith Walk. Wraith Walk increases your movement speed by 70% for four seconds and removes any roots. While active, you're not able to drop below 170% movement speed. This is a great movement speed increase, however, we're not able to use any abilities while using Wraith Walk, as it is a channeled ability. It has a one minute cooldown, so its cooldown is pretty short. So if we put this into action here using Wraith Walk, this is what it looks like, it's four seconds. If we use Blood Boil here, it does cancel that channel. Now Wraith Walk usually shines in boss fights, primarily single target boss fights when there's no adds that need to be controlled. In boss fights such as Shriek Ring and Sludge Fist, when there's no adds and you do need to move away from the boss, Wraith Walk is a great ability to use. So in the fifth row, it is quite variable. It does depend on the content you're doing. Generally in raids, you're going to want to go Wraith Walk, and generally in Mythic Plus, you do want to go Grip the Dead. The first talent in the sixth row is Voracious. This increases your Death Strike's healing by 20%, and gives you a buff that increases your Leech by 15% for the next 8 seconds. This talent gives you a lot of healing throughput, especially in a Mythic Plus situation. So now as you see, we have enough Runic Power to do our Death Strike. We'll do our Death Strike here, which will do 20% more healing, and we also get this buff here of Voracious which gives our 15% leech 
for eight seconds. And most situations will be able to keep Voracious up the whole time, so that's 15% leech we'll always have. This talent thrives in multiple target situations because you'll be dealing more damage and you'll be able to get more effectiveness out of that leech. It also has great synergy with Hemostasis as they both increase the healing of your death strike. Voracious does fall off in single target as you won't be dealing as much damage compared to a multiple target situation, so you won't be getting as much out of the 15% leech. The second talent of the sixth row is Death Pact. Death Pack heals you instantly for 50% of your max health, but it does absorb 30% of the next incoming healing for the next 15 seconds. While 50% of your max health seems like a great amount of healing, due to the healing absorb that comes after it, it really makes it quite a weak talent. So in action, we use Death Pact here, and we would heal for 50% of our max health if we weren't at max health here, and we do have this debuff here. Next 15,000 healing received will be absorbed. Since we are so spiky and we need to keep constantly healing up, having that 30% absorb is quite detrimental. And although 50% healing can save you in some situations, if you take away the 30% healing absorb, you're really only gaining 20% of your maximum health, which isn't a whole lot, especially for a two minute cooldown. So due to the healing absorb, we really never take this talent. The final talent of row six is Bloodworms. Your auto attacks have a chance to summon the Bloodworm. These Bloodworms will deal damage and after 15 seconds, or if you drop below 50% health, these blood worms will explode and heal you for 15% of your missing health. Let's see how this looks here. We'll auto attack, and right away, as you saw, we got this small blood worm here, and it's starting to attack our target there. And after 15 seconds, that blood worm will explode, and it'll heal us. And we just generated another blood worm there, so they can keep going. And it's all RNG of when we do get the blood worms. All due to our auto attacks there. So looking at the damage there, for my gear, they will deal on average 80 damage per hit. Now Bloodworms really excel in single target situations. In a single target fight, they'll probably deal anywhere between 5-8% to 8 of your maximum damage, depending how much damage you're doing with your other abilities, and they heal you for 7-10% to 10 of your overall healing. So that's pretty good damage and healing throughput overall. Since this is the only ability that increases your damage on this row, if you're just looking to increase damage output, definitely run Bloodworms. If you're looking for healing throughput, Bloodworms is a good go-to for single target situations as it will burst after 15 seconds or if you drop below that 50% health there. Generally for this row, I'll go Bloodworms for Raids and Voracious for Mythic Plus. You can go Bloodworms for Mythic Plus as well if you're not worried about the healing and mitigation, primarily in those low keys and you just want to deal a bit more damage. The first talent in this final row is Purgatory. Purgatory will prevent fatal damage for the next 3 seconds, instead giving you an incoming healing absorb for the damage being dealt to you. If you heal past this absorb amount, you're able to stay alive and keep going. If you don't heal up this absorb amount in the next 3 seconds, you will die. Purgatory can only occur every 4 minutes and you'll see a debuff saying so. Now, Purgatory can definitely be used in situations where you're afraid you're going to get one shot and you just need a bit more time to heal yourself up. It also gives you a good amount of buffer room in case you mess up your rotation. There are a lot of situations where maybe you need 1-2 to two seconds more to death strike up and then you would have been good. If you take Purgatory, then you'd be able to heal this up no problem. I generally take Purgatory if I'm trying out a new big pull in Mythic Plus or if there's a raid boss that I know there's one mechanic that I just don't have the gear to survive yet and I'll need to have Purgatory for another cooldown in order to survive the ability and not be battle rezzed. If you're just starting out and you find yourself dying a fair bit, this could be a good ability to use to give you that buffer room you need. The second talent in this final row is Red Thirst. Red Thirst reduces the cooldown of your vampiric blood by one and a half seconds for every 10 runic power used. Now with Ossuary active, your death strikes will cost 40 runic power. That means every time you death strike, this will decrease the cooldown of your vampiric blood by 6 seconds. This is quite a large cooldown reduction of vampiric blood, as it only has a minute and a half cooldown. This is a very strong talent to take as it'll net you a lot of extra vampiric blood usages, which is very, very nice. I would really recommend this talent as your go-to talent for this row for every situation, whether it's Raid or Mythic Plus. It's just very strong, and more vampiric blood usages is always good. The final talent for the final row is Bone Storm. Bone Storm costs between 10 and 100 runic power. If you have a number between 10 and 100, it'll use up all of that runic power. The duration of Bone Storm depends on how much runic power you used. To get the duration, you divide the amount of runic power by 10, and that's how many seconds that Bone Storm will last for. It has a 1 minute cooldown, which is pretty short. So for optimal usage of Bone Storm, you'll use it at 100 runic power, and this will get you 10 seconds of Bone Storm. Now as you can see, we've built up to over 100 runic power. If we pop Bone Storm here, it'll summon the large AoE around us, we'll get this buff, and we'll be dealing shadow damage to the enemies around us. And we're healing up 3% of max health for each enemy hit, up to 15% of max health. And if we look at the damage breakdown here, 
Each hit is around 400 damage. So Bone Storm does do a lot of damage and gives you a fair bit of healing. Its downside is that you do need to use all of that runic power and it will take up all the runic power that you have up to 100. This can be bad in situations where you're taking large amounts of spike damage and you need that quick death strike healing to get you to max health. Bone Storm more shines in AoE situations where you're taking consistent damage but you're not taking spike damage. Since we're Death Knights, we're mainly going to be taking spike damage and using the runic power on Death Strike is usually going to be better than using it on Bone Storm. However, Bone Storm does still have its place, primarily if you do want to push that damage output. I play around with it in lower keys to see how you like it. One thing to note is Bone Storm has really good synergy with the Venthyr Covenant ability, Swarming Mists. If I pop Swarming Mists now, as you can see, I'm generating large amounts of runic power, especially if I'm hard striking on top of that. What I'll do is I'll spend my runic power with Death Strike until it's done, then I'll pop Bone Storm, and then you just are able to heal a ton up, and from there you can keep building your runic power with hard strikes. Swarming Mist just makes it really easy to reach that 100 runic power fast. Overall in this last row, I would recommend going Red Thirst in most situations, but all three talents do have its place. So that's everything I have to say for now about talents. I hope you learned something from the video. Definitely try out different combinations of talents for yourself and see what you like, see what works for you. That's the best way to really get a good build going. Also trying out new talents, even if they might not be as good as other talents, will really help you learn that class better and learn what combinations of talents works the best. Well, thank you so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate all the overwhelming support I've gotten recently. It really, really means a lot to me. Please like the video and subscribe if it helped you and you enjoyed the video. And definitely let me know in the comments what videos you'd like to see next. I'll see you on the next one.